All right, guys, welcome back to the shack. Today I'm gonna to be reviewing a camera that was sent to me that is intended to be both a light burn camera as well as a remote control, remote access, remote monitoring camera. Uh, so that's something that it'll work with a lot of different machines and might be something you're interested in. Uh, I'm gonna go through some of the, the way it works, uh, the things that I like about it, the things that I don't like about it, and just we're just gonna go through it and uh, see what we think. So stick around, I'll be right back. All right guys, so first of all, I'm probably gonna mess this name up, okay? Depending on what part of the world you're from, but I'll let you read it as well. Uh, I'm gonna call it Men Mention, Mention maybe, uh, you know, who knows? Uh, not an English major, but the machine's called the Mention uh, Laser Cam. And guys, basically what this camera is, is it is a camera which can be viewed remotely using an app. Uh, it does work on iPhone. I haven't tested it on Android because I have an iPhone. Uh, what it does basically is connects to the machine and basically becomes a controller. Uh, it also has an SD card slot built into the camera in which you can put g-code files on there directly or you can upload them through the app to the sd card so in essence what it does is it takes your offline controller and makes it an online controller uh, which there may be a need for that for some of you that's not really something that that's high on my priority uh, i do like the the web monitoring for it Personally, for me, I think I would better suited for the 3D printer just where I can watch and uh, maybe get some cool video of the 3D printer working. But it has a lot of different functions. It has a time lapse function. It can take pictures while it's engraving. There's a lots of things that you can do with the camera and a little more than what I wanted to spend uh, on the review. So not trying to cut it short, but that's not something I'm going to be using a lot of. So what I want to do basically is I've got the machine out. I've got the longer B1 out. And I will tell you guys that as I thumb through the library in the app, uh, putting this machine, connecting this machine to it, it does support an extensive list of machines. Now, if you want to get this for your machine, if you don't have one of the major brands, I definitely would do your homework ahead of time and, and confirm that it is compatible with your machine. But I saw Adam Stack, all of the major brands it looked like were in the app. Uh, so that would lend it to be that it is compatible with them. Uh, but it comes with a flame sensor as well that you can connect to the, to the, the laser head, uh, which will send you flame alerts in the event that there is a fire. Uh, but we're going to move over. I'm just going to show you how this thing's mounted, what I think about the way it's put together and as far as functionality. Then we're going to play with the app and control the machine. Once we do that, we're going to go over light burn and try it as just a straight up light burn camera and see how that works. So... Let's move over. All right, so a lot of you guys know how I am about cable management. Uh, my biggest complaint, we'll go ahead and get this out of the way. My biggest complaint with this thing is that it adds a lot of cables that you gotta do things with. Uh, some of the cables could have stood to have been a couple of feet longer. Uh, they are, I mean, you do have the option, this uses mostly USB-C cables. Uh, you do have the option of getting your own cables to go with it to replace these so you can do a little better job with the management. But just for testing, guys, I wasn't going to run out and buy a bunch of extended cables or USB extenders. So the cable does also have to connect from the camera into the laser using whatever cable your machine uses. Uh, they include a really long uh, USB-C cable that if your computer, if your uh, engraver uses USB-C, you could use this guy, but mine doesn't. And the cables that come with most of these machines, as you all know, three foot is about all you get. So this has been a bit of an issue for me as well. Uh, but just for testing, I'm not, I'm not really planning on leaving this set up like this. Just for testing, I've got everything connected. I do have the flame sensor connected to power. Uh, it pairs with this i'm guessing by bluetooth because this power cable simply goes to the usb brick and then uh, it reads it so i've got that kind of laid over here uh, it does have instructions on how you can mount the 
flame sensor to the module using some double-sided 3M adhesive. Uh, but then you would have to go back and you would need to run the cabling with the rest of the cables on the machine. And I'm just, we're not going to cut this machine up and <laughs> recable everything uh, for this uh, for this test. Uh, but all in all, so far, I've been using it using the offline controller and it seems to work as advertised. Uh, you can you can move the machine, home the machine, uh, navigate through the workspace. You can get it to the material where you want it. Uh, frame, burn, the whole nine yards using the app as advertised. So that's mostly what I want to just kind of give you guys the, the overview of does it do what they said it does and uh, how well it works, how user-friendly it is. One of the other complaints that I have is the, the mount's not, you can, it's, it's not real stable, guys. Uh, so if you're going to be bumping this, moving this around, if this is not going to be stationary, this mount may not be adequate for what you want. Now, there are ways, you know, you can use, uh, it does use the standard uh, screw in for like webcams and just regular cameras. So you could actually fashion yourself uh, a bracket in the top of your enclosure or use some type of a, a rigid clamp mount to mount this thing rather than using the little boom that it comes with. It's just, I mean, it works, but if you're going to be hitting it, bumping it, it it's probably not going to, you're probably not going to be able to maintain accuracy through all of that. So I'm going to move over, get the uh, app out, and we're going to control the machine, show you how that works. Like I said, just disregard my cable management, guys. I didn't want to put in that much work <laughs> uh, testing this thing out on the table where everybody can see it. I am actually interested to see how it works with the 3D printer. So that's probably where this thing's gonna end up if I can figure out how to make it work with it. Uh, but we're gonna get the uh, camera moved around. I've got my logo saved to the SD card, which is in here. I did so through the application that's on the phone, uh, sent it to Google Drive, downloaded it, and then it when I added it to the files inside the app, I have confirmed it saved it to the SD card which is located in the camera. So that's gonna be basically acting as an offline controller for the machine. It just uses a USB connection. Uh, I will say though, you cannot, or at least I haven't figured out how to control the machine with light burn with it set up in this configuration. Uh, I'm assuming you would need to take and, and go ahead and remove the connection to the camera and just reconnect back to your computer to light burn in order to be able to do that. But the way it's configured right now is for the application and we're gonna move over and play with the app for a minute. All right, guys, when you open the app, basically you're gonna see this screen here that has the list of your devices, which of course I only have a one, and then just click on that. It's gonna to connect to the camera. Uh, camera has a pretty good picture. Uh, it shows fairly well. I have noticed a little bit of flickering being caused by my LED lights that I have in here, but all in all, works pretty well. This is your engraver connection and it's showing that my engraver is connected. Uh, engraving is off because it's, it's not engraving. I'm, I'm guessing that doesn't mean you can't engrave, just that it is not engraving. So go over here to the application and you can home the machine using the home button. Of course, it's already home, so it just kind of wiggled a little. Uh, but we'll move it away from home and I'll kind of show you how it works. So I'm going to move it over to the right, 100 millimeters and up 100 millimeters trying to let it split the focus guys but you know it's a little tough when you don't have a screen grab software for your phone so once you get it out there home works uh you can actually move it over well let's set it up finish homing uh move it out i can go ahead and get it into the work area where i want it all right, you can even fire the laser, but make sure you turn the power settings down. I'll put my glasses on here. Uh, you can fire the laser. Uh, you can increase the intensity of the laser if you need to. And then, of course, you can stop it using that button. So basically any function that you want to change, you can. You have your movement speed here. Uh, current coordinates you can adjust the power i haven't tried adjusting it while engraving but it seems that you could do that uh, but what you got to do is go over here to where the files are saved 
this is actually reading from that SD card. It's on board on the camera. And so I can go to the frame button. And, and when I created this G code, I put it as uh, current position right in the center. So I'm going to go ahead and hit frame right here. And it is going to frame it out. The one thing that it doesn't do and I haven't figured out how to do is turn the laser on for framing. But, you know, I don't know that that functionality is really needed. Uh, you also have all these buttons where you can you can make this make the screen bigger if you want to try to you know use it to get everything lined up or whatever. Uh, and then this little button right here that kind of shows like a laser impact. When you hit that button, the machine goes to engraving. And like I said, the only file I've got on the SD card right now is my logo. So in the event that we wanted to pause the engrave, you hit pause, and it does in fact pause. The pause button, it also sends you a notification that the, the engraving's paused. Uh, but then you can resume. And so far, the, the pause and resume seems to work pretty flawless. Uh, I haven't seen any issues with uh, leaving lines or anything like that. So this functionality-wise, it's pretty handy. Uh, you can go over here, and I can adjust the power when cutting, it says. So I'm going to crank the power up and see what happens. It says it's at 100%, so that's not going to work. Let's try turning it down. Okay, so yes, I can hear the material making noises with the changes of the power. So I'm at 50%, 40%, 20%. We'll see if that actually affects the burn. You can also speed it up, make it go faster. Uh, so speeding it up there. And you can definitely tell from where I'm standing here that it is going, it is going faster. So there we go. And went a little too fast there at the end, if you can tell. Uh, let's pull the, and it also, like I said, engraving is completed. And let's see if I can blow this up and use the camera to show you. Uh, you can see the top half of the logo is a lot fainter than the bottom half because I was messing with the speed and everything. So that actually does work if you wanted to be able to adjust that. Uh, I'm assuming it's just sending garble commands to the machine. Uh, but then, like I said, you can go back over here. I can send it back out. I don't know this would be all that great for precision work, but just for you know controlling the machine, it's, it's not terrible. So once I get it where I want it, go back to my G-code list, and I'm going to go ahead and tell it to burn it again. And it goes. So functionality-wise, guys, that part definitely works. Uh, not sure how precise the app operation of the machine would be. I, I think that's a little gimmicky. But, you know, if that's something you're into, then uh, there is that option. And you can see that when I changed the power settings earlier, uh, apparently it has not went back to its original settings. So I'm gonna turn the cutting power up. And decrease the speed a little bit. Try to get that a little darker. So, as advertised, you can control your machine uh, with the camera and, and, and do engraving. Uh, I ha I'm not doing any cutting with it. One, because it's not in an enclosure and I don't want to generate that much smoke. And two, uh, I just didn't set it up for that. So machine returns back to home and uh, you get the pop-up saying that you're engraved completed. So let's move over to Lightburn, see how it works in Lightburn now. All right, guys, I'm over on the computer now. Uh, you probably can hear the longer in the background. <laughs> it's a little loud outside the enclosure. Uh, but first, before we start using this camera in Lightburn, folks have asked me to demonstrate the like whole screen clarity of these cameras. And uh, just to confirm that the camera was having a problem with my lights, and just to rule that out as being the reason, I've turned the lights off. And I've, I've got some, some light on in here, but for the most part, I've got the LEDs, they're off overhead. So as you can see, 
This is kind of in a uh, low light configuration. I'll show you how lit it is in here. It's not terribly dark, but uh, the Elgato is doing a really good job of uh, adding some light to it. But for the most part, the image is really clear. I'm going to go over and turn the lights on and uh, show you what I'm talking about as far as the rolling lines that I'm getting from my lighting. And as you can see, that's what happens with the lights on. So I've went into the settings to see if there was maybe a, uh, you know, some settings in here I could change to hopefully, you know, lower that. Uh, you can change the resolution of the camera. I don't know why you would want, but you can change the resolution of the camera. It has photo settings uh, up to 2.1 megapixels for, you know, whatever other use you may need it for. And then you have uh, framing grid, you know, just the default Windows uh, settings for a camera. But I can't get it to stop interacting with those lights. And yes, that piece of plywood got wet. That's why we're using it for testing today. Uh, so with that, we'll move over to Lightburn and see if we can't get this thing configured properly and see how well it works. So over here in Lightburn, I've got the longer B1 connected to light burn I did have to disconnect the machine from the uh, camera and plug it directly into the computer in order to get it to find it on the, the porch so and as you can see it is it's communicating with the longer now uh, on com, com port 9 and I have the ability to home the machine so we're good to go on that. Next thing I want to do, guys, is I haven't set this camera up. You guys get to see firsthand exactly what goes into it. So I'm going to go over to Laser Tools, Calibrate Camera Lens. Uh, there it is, the Mention Laser Cam. And yes, I'm still getting those rolling lines. Now, for the calibration, I never do fisheye. I just do standard lens full calibration uh, and hit next. So let me grab the little card that they sent with it. And we're going to use their card to kind of run through this calibration with. All right, so I've got the card in there, guys. And one thing to pay attention to is when you set these cameras up, see those five dots that are up top? That's kind of the orientation that you want to go with for the towards the top of the work area, from my experience. Uh, this doesn't usually help. So there we go. All right, so it captured the image, 0 0.09. That's actually pretty good for uh, a laser cam. So let's let's keep moving through. All right, 1.4, not bad. All right, moving to the next one. And so far, guys, it's scoring pretty well. Uh, I will say that they did not print this on a reflective surface, and that's a big problem I have a lot of times when you get these cards. This one's actually like on some type of cardboard and uh, it's not highly reflective, so it's doing a real good job on that. So moving to the next one. All right, so as you can see, the more of these little captures we do, it starts squaring that image and compensating for the bubble effect. Uh, that's kind of what Lightburn does to make this work. Uh, I'm gonna have to move the gantry on this one, but uh, so far, so good. And guys, from my experience, you don't have to have these things exactly in the center. Uh, just, and you wanna make sure they're in your work area. Uh, in that quadrant. So let's go next bottom right. All right, it's, you see it's starting to really square it up now. Bottom left. All right, so that part is done. Uh, typically speaking, guys, I know you can go straight into a line camera here, but you're not gonna you're not gonna want to do that until you home the machine. So what I typically do is hit finish, so that it'll save that and home the machine first. Once you home the machine. Then you can go over to Laser Tools, Calibrate Camera Alignment, and you'll select your camera setup, which is typically gonna be this. Uh, then you're gonna go down, find the camera, which is the one we just did, and uh, push through with that. Now, I'm gonna be using a three millimeter thick material because I don't wanna use anything too expensive for this uh, endeavor. And I'm just gonna leave the rest of the settings the same, except we may change the scale once we get, uh, once we get started. So let me frame this and see how big it's gonna be. Yes, that scale is going to be a little much, so we're going to do 100 for the material that I have. 
but be right back. We'll let that burn and we'll move to the next step. The machine did the uh, pattern. And so next we're gonna go over here and capture an image of how it burned. So once you get a good clear picture here, and if you have any of those little lines like I'm having, you know, you can kind of just hit capture until you get it exactly how you want it. Uh, hit next. As you can see, the resolution of the camera is, is pretty impressive. Uh, it, it's doing a really good job. Uh, it did kind of seem like it switched over to black and white. I don't know if that's just light burn doing its thing or what. Uh, but I've got some nice crisp edges on the lines, which is pretty impressive. So the first step is you got to click step, uh, click the square, these little bullseyes. And if you see right here where there's pixels, this is kind of tough, guys. You're never going to get this perfectly right. But I try to get mine as close to the edges of those as possible and you just double click once you get the get one done then you got to go to two and so forth and if you've done cameras before guys i apologize i'm uh, trying to do this for the guys that maybe haven't uh then you're going to just drag up here to three and drag over to four once you do that what it's doing is basically it's drawing a box and it's going to align that box with your X and Y axis of your machine in the uh, final part of the calibration. So got all those marked. We've got our box. You can see it's pretty clear. So we're just going to hit next. Now we're done. So finish that. And now we should be able to go to the camera control button. Go to the Mintian laser and update the overlay. So that's what it looks like. So now, guys, before I move anything, what I want to do is do a little targeting uh, targeting basically just helps me confirm that this camera is going to uh, perform well enough for what I want. So I'm putting a little dot right there, and you can see I've updated the overlay. Uh, there's there's nothing under there, so we'll take that little dot out. And the, ob the object of this exercise is to see if the, how close the dot on the camera is to the actual physical dot. So I'm going to start this. You can see... You can kind of see what's going on over here in the uh, little control window there. So here we go. All right. So I'm going to update the overlay. And it's barely peeking out from under there. So not terrible. If we wanted to, we could adjust the image using the uh, little shift buttons here and get it lined up exactly where we want it but typically guys when you do so and you go to a different part of the work area it's not going to be the exact location there uh, that would work if you were trying to engrave something really really small in that particular spot but once you start moving around the workspace sometimes those adjustments aren't needed or either they're too much so we're going to target that piece of the one right there See how it does. Update the overlay. Okay, so that's uh, done pretty well. Let's. Okay, not bad. I'm gonna move this over to right here in this corner. All right, and we'll see what happens there. Oh, uh, as you can see, I've got my machine set to return to. So it actually gets out of the workspace once it completes a burn. So here we go. Let's do this one. All right, update the overlay. And you can see it's a little it's a little high left. So, but that's this is a tiny little circle, guys. This is a three millimeter circle. So let's do something bigger. Just to see if you had something larger. Uh, we'll try to do a circle on top of this guy right here. All right, make this a little smaller. We'll try to lay that right inside the other circle. So let's see how that works out. Now, guys, you can actually use this for monitoring while using light burn, but you can't use the controls. So that's that's where I think this thing would probably be, uh, people would want to use it, would be more so to just use it for observation. 
uh, you could have this, you know, on your uh, on your iPad or on your phone or whatever. Uh, if you did have to go, let's say you had a bathroom break hits you, you could use this not only as a light burn camera because it's it's currently working in light burn as well, but uh, you can actually use it. And I'm gonna frame the machine and watch. Let's see if I can get it to where I can do both at the same time here. Let's let's do this. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna let you watch and you can kind of see how real time it is. I'm gonna frame this uh, cut right here one more time before we move forward and watch the two cameras on the screen there. Or technically, I guess there's three. So you've got a little bit of a delay, of course, because it's going through the internet. But for the most part, it's pretty uh, it's pretty close. So if you were to look at your phone, you know, you had to run to the bathroom or go check the mail, get the kids off the school bus or whatever, you could use this to just kind of keep an eye on things uh, until you got back. All right, so as you can see on the, uh, on the camera over here, we've got a big black spot showing up on the right side of the screen. Uh, let's update the overlay. All right, I'm going to go over here and just turn that layer off and see what's under it. So that's actually pretty impressive. It, it did a really good job on that one. Uh, it went exactly where I wanted it to. So all in all, guys, it is still not 100%. None of these cameras will be as far as completely accurate. Uh, but I'm going to give this one a pass as far as it does have usable accuracy just as well as any other camera I've ever used. Uh, like I said, so far it has done, uh, it's done a good job with that. So I'm going to let that finish over there, guys. And then we'll wrap this up and move off to the final thoughts about the, uh, about the camera. All right. So let's update the overlay. We'll zoom in down here and take a look. So far, so good. Turn that layer off. And voila. So, yeah, definitely usable as far as a light burn uh, targeting camera. No no doubt it, it does a pretty good job. I'm, I'm actually impressed at how well it does it this, at this particular part. Uh, so, let's wrap this thing up, guys. All right, guys, so here's the targeting drills that we did. And you can see uh, on that cut right there, it was really, really close on uh, this one right here. I mean, th those were pretty much dead on. The really small stuff, of course, you know, the smaller your graphic, the more noticeable that little variation is going to be. And any camera is going to have some variation. Uh, I consider this very acceptable as far as cameras go. Uh, now, it is a little, it, it, it is, it's, it is going to require a little bit of knowledge of how to hook these things up. It's not going to be necessarily plug it into your computer. Uh, there is the app if you know, you're going to have to figure out how to work that. But all in all, uh, if, like I said, if you want to fail safe, and guys, by no means do I want people operating a laser engraver from their office while they're at work and lasers at home, I think that creates a whole lot of problems and potential for fires and so forth. Uh, that's just, I mean, yes, could you do it with this? Yeah, I guess you could. Uh, I do not recommend that. So, uh, if, but if, if what you're wanting, guys, is a way of having one camera in your enclosure instead of having multiple cameras, being able to observe uh, a job in the event that you do need to run out for a minute and come back, uh, rather than not have a camera that can do this, I think it would definitely help with safety uh, as far as it's better than not having anything. So, uh, all in all, the camera works as they stated that it would. It does what it's, they stated it would. Uh, cable management, not a fan, but if you're in an enclosure so that you can, you know, run the cables, maybe get you a couple of longer uh, USB cables to operate the machine, you can clean that up a lot. Uh, but the bracket that holds it, it's not all that stable, but if it's not going to be getting bumped or hit or shoved around, it, it works. Uh, so my advice, if you did want to get one of these things, would be to invest in a little added length on the cables and maybe come up with a permanent way of mounting it using using some type of really solid, really rigid uh, clamp that's made for you know regular cameras or whatnot that would be a little more rigid. Uh, but 
for the most part, guys, it does what they said. I will drop links to the camera down below if you want to go check that thing out and see how see how see what it works for you. I will be probably playing with it with the 3D printer. Uh, I know they, they have this camera both for 3D printers and lasers, and I'm going to see if I can get this one to work for 3D printers. That is something that I actually would, wouldn't mind uh, because that would enable me to be able to, you know, monitor my prints while I'm out here in the shack uh, as well as, you know, print while I'm here if I need to. So that'd be, that'd be kind of cool. But until next time, guys, uh, check those links out if you're interested and uh, be safe. Have a good day.